The title of this print is My Father's Farm from the Moon. It's an etching which I began in 1974, and I'm printing it now in the spring of 1976. I'm Bill Ritchie, and through the course of this videotape, I'm going to try to show how all the separate parts of the print were put together to get to this final state. The plate is made of different sections, and I'll be showing how each of the sections is colored and inked and printed. The very first thing that I have to do is tear out the little shapes which become the ochre colors using these plastic templates. Score it first with a sharp point. The paper I'm using here is called Japanese etching. And it will later be printed with watercolors using Japanese woodblock technique. I'll mark a little SS on the back, which as you will see is necessary to keep me from printing on the wrong side. There are four of these all together. These are watercolors. I'm using a cadmium yellow and a Chinese orange. And water on a wooden block. It's a birch block. It has quite a texture of its own. And this is what I'll use to put the first colors down on those pieces of Japanese etching paper. This is where the SS comes, comes in because if I printed on the wrong side of the paper, then it would be reversed in the final print. The grain of the wood block has produced a, a dotted line. And I follow this with Chinese orange. This is a Japanese brush, specially designed for woodblock printing with watercolors. It distributes the inks and the water fairly evenly over the plate. I have a certain way I place these each time so they don't vary much from print to print. And then the dots are simply impressions from my fingers. It looks a little like tiger spots or giraffe spots. Those pieces of paper are laminated into the print with an adhesive made of arrowroot starch. I make that adhesive by mixing an ounce and a half of water 
with three-fourths of a teaspoon of the arrowroot. You start with cold water. And uh, after you've mixed it in cold water, you slowly bring it to a, a simmer, and it turns transparent. And the adhesive is ready to use. And we'll be using that much later in the printing process. It just takes a few minutes to cook on a hot plate, but the hot plate should be kept at a fairly low heat. It's very easy to scorch. That's why I'm moving this pan constantly. Bring to a simmer, stirring constantly. This print's going to be printed on a piece of rag paper, Arsh, and this paper's been soaking for 48 hours, and it is 30 inches by 48 inches, and this, this step must be taken before I begin inking the plates. I take off all the surface water. using blotter paper and paper towel. When that's done, I roll it into a tube. and then wrap it in plastic. This method is called damp book, where sheets of paper are dampened and then put into a book. This is maybe more properly called a damp tube. And I pinch the ends and it will sit for the next several hours while I'm inking the plates. The next step is to dampen the little paper parts which I printed earlier. All the paper parts used in the print have to be dampened. These small paper pieces only need very light dampening. It's only to make them more receptive to the adhesive. This sheet will be the leaves of the damp book, and it too has to be lightly dampened. The watercolor has had plenty of time to dry, and I'll spray them lightly on both sides and put them in their damp book. And as before, to keep it damp, Wrap it in plastic, fold the ends, and while I'm inking the plates, I'll leave it under a 
heavy glass slab so that it will remain flat and uh, evenly damp. And now I'm ready to start inking the plates. This is the first plate of four. I always put a little oil on the parts that are going to receive relief colors. My thinking is that it cuts down any resistance that might otherwise affect the uh, relief colors I put down. This oil is called plate oil. It's a specially prepared linseed oil made for intaglio printing or etching, uh, printing etching plates, that is. I put it on rather excessively and then wipe it down to a very thin layer. first with a cloth and then with the heel of the hand. Next I put down the first color which is an orange using a little rubber squeegee. All the inks I'm going to be using have been prepared ahead of time. They're basically lithographic inks made for hand lithography, to which I've added two modifiers, one composition called Easy Wipe, and the other plate oil, the burnt plate oil I referred to a minute ago. After distributing it with the squeegee and working it well into the texture of the plate, I'll smooth that layer on a warm plate. This is a hot plate I'm putting it on right now. I'll smooth that ink layer with a little brayer. This ensures that the final uh, finish of the ink will be, not, will be without uh, heavy deposits fairly even tone will result. The plate gets quite hot. It's probably about 140 degrees. When it's reached a certain temperature, I remove it and uh, begin wiping. with a material called tarlatan, which removes some of the excess ink. It's always best to start with an excessive amount of ink and then wipe it down to a very thin tone. The last wiping of the orange is done very lightly with tarlatan. Soften the edge of the orange with a piece of cotton, cotton cloth, and then a hand wipe. Now I'm ready to apply the black. to the lower part of the plate, again in the same manner as I did the orange, using a rubber squeegee, working the black ink well into the texture of the plate. Once 
warming it. And rolling it out very smooth. Back to the tarlatan again, this time, of course, a black tarlatan or black ink. Blending it as I go with the tarlatan into the orange. And then the final blending with the hand. After this, the plate will be ready to take the surface colors in its top part. To put the surface colors down on this plate, I'll be using this glass slab. And under the glass slab is a drawing in heavy lines that show me the outline of the plate itself. And within that outline, this drawing indicates where the colors are supposed to be shaped and formed to provide the image. When I roll the ink out, I'll first blend it, and then I'll do what's called register the roller. With this mark corresponding on the roller to this mark. The colors are yellow, sienna, and blue. And they each go down between the lines indicated by the illustration underneath the glass. First blended, spinning the roller this time, ignoring the registration mark, until the colors blend into one another. Then, again, following the lines, the design of these things I call columns is wiped out following what I can see through the glass. Now I register the roller here and pick up that design. Obviously, I must not turn the roller or spin the roller at this point. The mark has to come out somewhere near the registration mark. Then this design is rolled onto the surface of the plate. Place the inked plate where I'll roll on the surface colors. This mat will help keep the roller from dropping into areas where it isn't supposed to. And then the roller registered to another arrow on that mat. 
goes across the plate and deposits that design. Now this step has to be repeated quite a few times. Many of the processes I've shown in this tape so far have taken much longer than we've actually shown on the videotape. After the first plate is inked up to the proper value and color, plate number two gets its inking and wiping. Again, this time I'm using another color. It's a purplish black. It's squeegeed onto the plate in the same way as before. When the ink has been squeegeed, the plate is warmed. and the ink rolled out smooth again. Then removed from the heat, and the process of wiping starts. Now this process is, takes quite a long time. I have to proceed slowly so as not to wipe out too much ink. The ink has to be left trapped in the textures and lines that are etched into the plate, uh, but the surfaces have to be wiped almost clean, leaving only a tone of color. All in all, this, this step takes about 30 minutes. Again, the last wiping is done very lightly. And this plate is ready. The edges always have to be cleaned on every plate. After I've finished doing the wiping, I have to clean all the edges where these parts will be joining one another. That does it for plate number two. Plates number three and four are almost the same in configuration. And they get another color, which is a uh, greenish black. The process is still the same. And this inking and wiping process takes, again, about a half hour. The total time from start to finish on this printing plate is about three and a half hours. When all the plates are inked and wiped, and their edges clean, the four main parts go together thus. And there are four filler plates.
Now I have my paper from the damp tube. And it's the first piece to go down onto the etching press bed. As the purpose for having it rolled up in the damp tube is so that it has a natural curl. As you'll see in a few minutes, that curl will keep the paper from falling onto the printing plate before it's supposed to. There also are marks on the press bed and measurements that I've made beforehand to ensure that the plates paper and uh, plates and paper are all together in, in exactly the right positions. After the paper is put in place, there are three blankets. This is standard technique in printing etchings. There are three blankets for helping the paper to be pushed down into the printing plate, into the etched design the lines and the textures where the ink remains after the wiping process. The first blanket is a thin wool felt called a sizing catcher. The second blanket is thicker, about a quarter of an inch wool, called the forming blanket or the pusher. And the third blanket is a woven and felt on a piece of wool called the roller blanket. I'll let this rest here while I prepare the paper parts and then I'll be ready to print. After the blankets are on, the etching press is tightened down using these dials or these uh, pressure screws, which are fitted with calibrated uh, dials so I can set the pressure the same every time I print. This is the damp book containing the small paper parts that were printed wood block. And I open them up. The side marked SS, which, by the way, stands for sizing side. And I'm applying the arrowroot starch as thinly as possible on the back side with an ordinary watercolor brush. When doing this, a person should always brush from the center and work out over the edges and be certain that the edges are uh, given their bit of sizing. Now all four parts of the, the paper parts are sized. I take back the blankets on the etching press, uncovering the paper that's been sleeping beneath it. And the paper itself is rolled on this, oh, I guess you could call it a dispenser. dispenser has a little rack. I had to make this especially for this print. So I found myself printing alone so many times in the studio, no one to help me hold the paper up off the plates while I was printing. Next, the, the plates are each in turn 
inked, uh, excuse me, warmed one by one and assembled on the press bed. This printing plate sits on the press bed at a strange angle, and so I have to have little marks and corresponding marks on the press bed and the plate so that when the first plate goes down, it's in exactly the right position and all the other plates are locked to it. The purpose of these little filler plates is to provide a beveled edge so that the, under the tremendous pressure put on these edges won't cut the paper and the blankets as it passes through under the roller. These are not inked, they are just little uh, plastic plates that have been sawn and filed so they fit into those spots. Last, before I start printing, is placing the paper parts. Now I turn it through. Turning it through takes about five minutes. I'm not on the plate yet. Now I can feel it beginning to go under the roller and I slow down my speed. I've come to think that the slower I print, the more ink transfers to the paper. I get the richest print that way. So the bed should travel very slowly at this stage. All the plates were warmed beforehand, and uh, this has the effect of softening the ink and making it transfer to the paper a little better.
The next step is to tape this print down to a board, tape it all around the edges and uh, let it dry. Of course, as the damp, as the water leaves the paper, as it dries, it will stretch, It'll be very flat. Well, that concludes the printing process. This is the print we just made. It's, of course, different than the one we started the tape on. I think maybe now it's a little easier to understand what I meant by the different parts in the plate and the way the plate is joined together. So that's about it. <laughs>